chers téléspectateurs, téléspectatrices de la télévision Channel 17 Town Mirroring. Et nous voici à ce nouveau numéro du mois de juin que nous vous saluons d'abord bonjour, bonjour à tous et bienvenue sur ce plateau. Aujourd'hui nous avons notre invité, je crois que ça c'est pour la deuxième fois, qui va nous parler d'un sujet très très important, très pertinent, qui pourra vraiment nous aider dans la communauté pour que, pour que nous puissions vraiment prendre des mesures, des précautions. Comme vous le savez bien, notre émission, c'est African Variety Show. Alors, c'est une émission qui aide aux immigrants de bien s'intégrer ici à Burlington, particulièrement aussi à Burlington, mais en général aussi à Vermont, parce que nous avons beaucoup de nos frères et sœurs qui habitent Winoski, Williston, Essex, Colchester. Alors, notre thème d'aujourd'hui est intitulé euh, « Le cannabis euh, » et puis euh, « Lié au problème de santé ». Donc, euh, et si nous pouvons vraiment peut-être euh, parler des gens en Lingala, donc les lots où il docteur Catherine, et tu présenté, il est à un sujet où il y a malam ou l'élo. Tu as aussi déjà une fois, je crois qu'il y a une année passée, on va parler de ce qu'il y a Bangui, na eh, ba problème à santé ba bandeko bazali ko consommer bangi et puis ba forme nini bazali côté que la biso to yebike awa bangi comme illégal na niveau avermont ba magasin zali to ko mona ba forme nini ya ya biloko ba bazali ko teka et comme sous forme ba bonbon mais na kati to zana bangi zana kati alors ezali très très dangereux pour la santé à bana na biso ba jeune na biso et là où tu t'en poké à docteur Catherine, il y a un sujet moi à Mouzouri Sana, il y a un peu de facile à l'air où il y a un membre qui a dit qu'il y a un peu de temps à l'air où il y a un peu de temps à l'air où il y a un peu de temps à l'air où il y a un peu de temps à l'air où il y a un peu de temps à l'air où il y a un peu de temps à l'air où il y a un peu de temps à l'air où il y a un peu de temps à l'air où il y a un peu de temps à l'air où il y a un peu de temps à l'air où il y a un peu de temps à l'air où il y a un peu de temps à l'air où il y a un peu de temps à l'air où il y a un peu mais ça, ça, ben, on va dire que ma forme est à Mingi. Léo, tu te donnes ma bonbon, même tu te présentes à Pa. Il y a un bang in Dani. Alors, il y a un bang in Dani. 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 Il y a un bang in Dani de recevoir sur ce plateau Dr Catherine qui est dermatopathologiste elle est certifiée en pathologie anatomique pathologie clinique et dermatopathologie et elle est clinicienne qui diagnostique aussi les problèmes de cancer de, de la peau dans un laboratoire indépendant de dermatopathologie médicale alors elle est directrice pour ce poste là donc, aujourd'hui, il y a une spécificité, donc elle va présenter en anglais. Et puis, à la fin, nous, nous allons donner un message d'éducation, un message à entrer avec la santé publique pour que nous puissions éduquer la population, promouvoir la santé de la population de, dans notre communauté auquel nous vivons. Alors, Dr. Katen, bonjour. Hello. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for having me. What an honor to be back on your show again today. You're welcome. So I have a lot of slides on on this topic, and I'm going to go kind of quickly. I hope that's not going to make people's heads spin. Um, so we all have talked about in the past, marijuana has a lot of side effects, um, mm. and uh, many of these are proven. And I'm going to go through the evidence that marijuana is a component cause of psychosis. This evidence is becoming stronger and stronger. And then we're going to talk about some of the guide rails that um, health uh, rail, uh, safety rails that public health um, safety uh, guidelines that the state of Vermont has put in, into law and how well those are working and what we can possibly do to make them work a little bit better. Um, so this is to introduce um, the uh, International Academy on Science and Impact of Cannabis. I am on the board of this organization, and it's an organization of doctors educating on, on marijuana or cannabis. And basically, we recognize that cannabis is potentially harmful and that policies and practices which enhance or increase the use of cannabis 
risk serious um, medical and social consequences, and we just really want the public to um, have a clear idea of this so they can have informed decision making. Um, we do have on our website, Isaac the number one dot org. There's a library and you can look up peer review medical literature. Um, it's translated into terminology that the general public can, can follow and it's um, a very informative and easy to use. I hope you will uh, take a minute and have a look. So let's talk about uh, cannabis and psychosis and schizophrenia. We know that cannabis is associated with, with a number of side effects. This is the most uh, maybe traumatic or or uh, concerning because it can impact a young person for their entire life and that can impact a whole group of people whole, so their whole family is then impacted. Um, it can happen at the end of using high potency for a very long time. It can happen the first or second time that you use. So we're often asked, what is the evidence that cannabis is uh, actually a component cause of my son's or daughter's psychosis or schizophrenia? So when, if we look back at tobacco, um, we had in the beginning, we didn't have, there was a suspicion that, mer that uh, tobacco use was associated with uh, cardiovascular disease and especially lung cancer. But we didn't know it to be true until the Bradford Hill analysis was, um, was used to assess that risk. And basically why we do this is we can't take a group of kindergartners and divide them into two groups and give one cannabis and give the other nothing and watch 20, 40, 60 years later and find out which ones develop cancer and which ones don't. Same way we can't take a group of kindergartners, a random, randomly cohort controlled kindergartners, you know, divide them evenly, um, randomly into two groups and give one cannabis and see which if there's more likely to have psychosis, schizophrenia, uh, cannabis hyperemesis syndrome, addiction, all the other things that were associated um, in those groups. So that's totally completely unethical. So what we do instead is we look at the Bradford Hill um, causality. This is a something that's tried and tried and true. When it when it became evident that cancer was caused by tobacco, we put labels on, on uh, cigarettes and our whole public health attitude towards tobacco change. So this is a very powerful tool and criteria that we have used in the past and we're, we are now applying it to cannabis and, and psychosis. Yeah. And I, I'm going to just go through this very quickly, but basically if you take um, uh, some of the evidence, this is some of the evidence, there's a lot more, there are hundreds of articles out there that point uh, to cannabis being a component cause of, of psychosis. But nearly half of patients who present with cannabis-induced psychosis will convert to full-blown schizophrenia or psychosis. That's a staggering number. It's um, much higher than other drugs of abuse like meth methamphetamines. Cannabis exposure comes before the development of psychosis and schizophrenia. We have a number of articles on, that show that. Greater use of more potent products result in a higher incidence of psychosis. This is very important. It's becoming more and more evident. We have more and more articles coming out which show that. So the high potency product is very dangerous. Yeah. High, the active component in cannabis THC when given to randomized controlled, so if you take two people People, two groups of people that you're getting you know, off the street, you control them for their um, family history of mental illness or, or past drug, whatever you want to control, you have equal, two equal groups, randomly d put them into two groups, and then give one THC and the other a placebo in the laboratory, you can induce psychotic symptoms in the laboratory. So it's a very powerful, controlled, um, prospective uh, double-blind study that also supports the um, that cannabis is a component cause of psychosis and schizophrenia. The majority of patients who develop can uh, psychosis and schizophrenia using cannabis have no family history of schizophrenia. So this idea that if you develop schizophrenia on cannabis, it's your, it's your family's fault, it's your genes' fault, it's something you know weird about you, that's really not turning out to be true. There's something in the cannabis itself that's going on here. Cannabis beats all of the drugs of abuse when leading to schizophrenia, even when compared to PCP, meth, or chronic alcoholism. Mm -hmm. And in some 30 to 50 percent of fully <coughs> half of the patients who present to their doctor with first episode psychosis actually have cannabis-induced psychosis resulting from regular use of THC. This is true in some cities, namely Amsterdam. So as the prevalence of high use of high-potency THC goes up, the, the more people are presenting to the ERs with his cannabis-induced psychosis. And um, just, just to repeat, in Amsterdam, half of the people who are presenting with this very 
dangerous um, situation, psychosis is a medical emergency, um, would be well, but for their cannabis use. So that's a, a huge burden to our healthcare system. And who's suffering? The human suffering is, is, is huge, both for the victims and for the families. Mm -hmm. Because cannabis use disorder and disorder and diseases which can result from its use, especially like schizophrenia, are so devastating and yet so difficult to treat using rehabs, medication, antipsychotics, or psychotherapy, we are compelled to work together internationally and nationally and locally at our own uh, village you know, level to engage our public health experts to employ data-driven, scientifically proven, effective um, you know, prevention models to prevent these cases of psychosis and schizophrenia. Once they develop, they're very difficult to treat, very expensive to treat, so antipsychotics can be up to $25,000 a year. And wow. people are often on that drug for you know decades. Um, and of course, their life expectancy becomes much less, like 20 years less than it would otherwise be. In 1964, when physicians and scientists finally linked smoking to cancer, there was public outcry, as we all know. And as a result, doctors' warning labels were required on the packaging, and advertising was banned on broadcast media. So we don't see you know, advertising for tobacco on TV anymore. And that's the result of this Bradford Hill criteria, which showed that tobacco was causing cancer. Just like we're now seeing marijuana, the use of cannabis marijuana is a component cause of psychosis and these other um, issues like cannabis hyperemesis syndrome, suicidality, um, you know, harm to the baby, driving uh, problems, um, et cetera, and use disorder addiction. So back in 2015, uh, we did. Uh, Dean Whitlock and Christine Miller did a study, and they looked at the prospective cost to, to Vermont if we legalized it. So what, how many more cases of psychosis and schizophrenia would we have if, we, if it becomes more used mm -hmm. um, and more prevalent and the uh, uh, perception of harm goes down as we would had anticipated from other places? And based on the increased use that was anticipated, um, in something called the RAND report, um, it was estimated that taxpayers would have five to eleven million dollars in increased health care costs per year mm. to treat just schizophrenia, so not the cannabis hyperemesis syndrome, not the addiction, um, just the, the psychosis and schizophrenia that resulted. We think that this is probably a gross underestimation because there's a lot more use disorder than we anticipated. The use is higher and most importantly, the potency of the product has gone much higher than what it was in 2015 and 16. It would be interesting to challenge the medical community in Vermont to repeat that study analysis and see what is the cost to Vermont today mm -hmm. of psychosis and schizophrenia um, due to marijuana use in Vermont. How much are we uh, paying for this, um, for, for legal marijuana in Vermont? Um, another study came out which reviewed the association of cannabis potency and mental illness and, we're, and it came to the conclusion overall the evidence suggests the use of higher potency cannabis compared to lower potency is associated with increased risk of psychosis and the risk is higher when people use uh, daily. We also have a higher use when you use high potency cannabis a greater percentage of the population will have a, develop a use disorder in other words they'll become um, addicted. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, is great for people who are selling marijuana. If you have a use disorder, you'll go to the store every day and buy more. So that's a great business tactic. But in terms of our medical community and what we need to treat um, and, and the su human suffering, that's a problem. Um, in Canada, we have some information uh, where when they're, uh, they did not allow marijuana in edibles in the beginning. And, um, and at some point, they began to allow them in edibles. And so you can see the, sl the line goes flat, and then it shoots up. When it shot up, our child, the child poisonings in Canada spiked. Mm -hmm. So there's a link between um, having edibles um, and, the sp and, and more kids being poisoned. Mm -hmm. And you also have a link. Um, so if you look at the bottom, there's a blue line, which is kind of flat. Mm -hmm. That line is Quebec, and in Quebec they did not allow edibles, and they also um, did not allow um, any THC over 30%. So the THC cap, which we have a cap of 60%, 
is protective against poisoning and ER visits. So that's, a, that's great information that we have from mm -hmm. Canada. Right. Also in Canada, we, in the beginning, they had a limited number of shops, <coughs> and then after a few years, they allowed many shops. So you see on the second half here, the part in pink is the kids. Their poisoning rate went way up after the number of shops. So more shops, more poisonings, um, and uh, th there's, there's this direct link. And having this information, again, from Canada, which is very, very important for us to pay attention to. So, you know, in Vermont, when we legalized, the legislators did pay attention to that, and, and they put some uh, guardrails. They put the 30% the and 60% THC cap in our products. Every year, the CCB has come back and tried to get rid of that, and the lo lobbyists and the cannabis shops have tried to get rid of that, but so far, it's been in place. And that's a protective, as we know, as the, sh as the con concentration of THC goes up, the likelihood of having um, schizophrenia and use disorder goes up. So we've kept that in place. That's good. And here is another statute, part of the statute that was uh, passed in Vermont. And that statute says neither the product nor the packaging can appeal to children, to people under age 21. Um, so any, any, any product that sells THC that has a cartoon or has a, a chocolate candy or anything that's aimed at children mm -hmm. um, is, is illegal by statute in Vermont. So how has this worked out? Here's some lollipops that are for sale in, these are THC lollipops that are for sale in Vermont. Um, we had a news report in January where NBC5 reported that there was a 1,500% increase in child poisonings in northern New England, and we're seeing that in Vermont as well. Hmm. Um, the Cannabis Control Board, the head of the Cannabis Control Board, James Pepper, was quoted on that uh, emission as saying, you're not going to see THC Skittles or Snicker bars, for instance. But here are some of the things that you do see, lollipops, chocolate candies, rainbow squares, and maple uh, candies. You also have gummy bears and more chocolate candies. So according to the statute, these would be illegal, but they're still being sold. So there's sort of a disconnect between mm -hmm. what's happening in the stores, mm -hmm. what James Pepper is saying is going to be sold to Vermonters, and what Vermonters are encountering. And in fact, we are seeing increased uh, kids being admitted in the ER and intubated in the ICU. Why are people intubated? Because their airway is unstable. Someone is worried that they may not live or may not, if you can't breathe, you can't live. Um, hmm. So these are not just uh, minor um, admissions to the ER. People don't usually bring their child to the ER if they're not um, pretty concerned about them. Um, so this, this has, uh, you know, we passed a law, and as a result of, the, of the, passing that law, we're having kids poisoned and in the ER. Now this is the consensus of the medical community in Vermont, um, medical, the Vermont Medical Society, and we've also seen it in other communities in, Ver in, the, in the United States adopt similar warnings, but our warning was warning, THC may cause psychosis, impaired driving, suicide attempt, addiction, uncontrolled vom vomiting, harm to nursing or fetus, nursing baby or fetus, and this can occur in individuals with no previous history of psychosis or mental illness. This is a 31 uh, word warning label. Um, it mirrors the point of sale flyer, which is in uh, Colorado and in Vermont. Colorado's is, is, is similar, has almost all of these on it. Vermont's point of sale flyer has all of these. Unfortunately, the statute in Vermont says when you buy something in a Vermont store, you get the point of sale flyer in your bag. That's not happening. So again, we have a disconnect between what the statute was passed and what's actually happening. Um, what we actually have in Vermont, this is the label that you'll see. It's 141 words. The type is 0 0.6, and it's very 0 0.6 font size. And as you can see, it's very difficult, sadly, to read. Um, and even some of this is allowed as well. The Cannabis Control Board has said this is okay, apparently. Uh, we have the nutritional uh, uh, information, and then hidden behind that is the important poison control number and the um, you know harm to babies and nursing and all the other uh, uh, warnings that the public should be seeing. 
One, we do know that prevention is possible. If we, you put in these guardrails, you'll have better, uh, you know, you'll have less ER visits, you'll have less people, less children um, poisoned, and you'll have less addiction. Um, and we know that, uh, you know, effective prevention begins by countering the prevailing misperception of benignity and replacing that with a frank discussion and acknowledgement of accurate proven scientific facts and data about the harms which surround cannabis use. And this talk uh, was given in the past, and it has been in the past, dedicated to Patty, who's a Vermont mother, who, whose, whose son had schizophrenia. She cared for him for decades and was eventually overcome with anxiety and depression, unrelenting depression, and she, she succumbed by jumping into the frozen Winooski River December five years ago. So the pain of the suffering that is associated with psychosis and the other ills of cannabis are not limited to the to the person who has schizophrenia, but also their family suffers as well. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, warnings are, are necessary. Vermonters, you know, definitely deserve more. This is the statute that we have in Vermont, which is not being um, followed. And um, <coughs> so I guess, you know, we just have a plea out there for, for folks to, you know, demand that their, their marijuana shop um, uh, uh, follow the law and give everybody a point of sale flyer. Uh, follow the law and not produce any candies that are um, attractive to children. And I'll just put those back up there. See, these are some of the things that we find in Vermont that that are attractive to children that are being sold. Thank you so much, <laughs> uh, Dr. Catherine. This is very, very important. So, what is your um, uh, public health key uh, message to uh, to the community? I, th and, uh, I think it's twofold. One, you know, this, know the law, mm -hmm. know that these are illegal. These with THC in them would be uh, illegal. A, mm -hmm. a gummy bear would be illegal. Mm -hmm. And make sure that your legislature, your cannabis control board, uh, James Pepper, your police go and enforce the law. That that um, anything that's attractive to children shouldn't be sold in Vermont. Mm -hmm. We it's unacceptable that our children are being poisoned by passing a law just a few years ago. One, even one child being in the intensive care, having the horror of an intubation um, is, is unacceptable. That child, I mean, we all know that intubation is, results in, can result in post-traumatic stress disorder, all kinds of problems. I mean, this is a major medical intervention. Um, so, so yeah, let's, let's enforce the law Mm -hmm. um, and let's get some better warnings, to get some warnings that actually re reflect the, 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 the medical harms that we know exist, like psychosis. Ok, euh, maintenant nous revenons en français pour clôturer notre émission d'aujourd'hui. Comme vous venez de voir là-bas, c'est le cannabis. Et puis euh, nous voyons aussi euh, les, 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 la, la forme des, je peux dire des, des bonbons qui, qui sont vendus, mais dedans il y a les taux de THC, THC qui vraiment eh, ont, euh, qui a des conséquences néfastes dans, euh, dans le corps humain. Alors la, la consommation de tout ce que eh, nous, nous venons de parler ici, les marijuana comme ici chez nous c'est maintenant légal, il y a beaucoup de des magasins où euh, les gens peuvent aller s'en approprier. Alors, il y a des conséquences néfastes du point de vue de la santé mentale. Donc, entre autres, ça, ça, peut, ça peut causer la psychose. Et quand quelqu'un a la psychose, beaucoup plus ça se manifeste par... Euh, il y a, il y a, la personne a les, a les difficultés de se concentrer, et la personne a l'humeur dépressive, et la personne a tendance de beaucoup dormir, il est anxieux à tout moment et puis il est méfiant. Et il se retire de la famille, il est isolé de la famille, il devient un peu, un peu plus solitaire de la famille et des amis. Il a aussi des délires souvent. Mais aussi, il y a aussi la, la schizophrénie que nous appelons, c'est un terme vraiment euh, euh, psychiatrique aussi, et qui est une maladie mentale qui, a, qui affecte tout. De la façon dont vous pensez, hein, et la manière dont vous sentez, vous vous comportez, et cela euh, signifie que vous n'êtes vous pas capable de contrôler votre vie. Et pour arriver à, à, à aider cette personne-là, ça demande beaucoup de moyens qui euh, pourront vraiment entraîner beaucoup de problèmes sociaux, un déséquilibre familial. Donc, Bandeko, 
les lots ont été mis en Lingala, les lots ont été mis en côté de la Bissau Bangui, dans le magasin. Il faut tirer attention. Parce que la loi, ok, non, il faut que se procure. Mais il y a une forme, 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 mais il y a une concentration à THC. Ils sont vraiment très nuisibles pour les autres et les autres. Pour la santé, il y a Moutou et il Moutou. Et il y a qui ont entraîné Moutou à développer tout le monde, la psychose, la schizophrénie. Donc Moutou a Zali, a aussi contrôlé la vie et a se retiré dans la société comme il est Moko. Et qui ont entraîné PA à ça, la Bama Kambébele, dans la société, a évolué mal à Moutou. Et il y a des conséquences dans le niveau de la famille. C'est ce qui fait que dans la loi, il y a des votants qui n'ont pas tenu compte. Parce qu'il y a des gens qui, dans le temps, au monde n'engue pas comme ça et cigarette est nuisible pour la santé ils sont vraiment clair mais na ba biloko yo ba pona ki ba loi ils n'ont pas fait attention à cela alors bazali côté que la bateau na ba forme à ba bonbon pe ba kota pe na ba chocolat pour attirer bateau mais na kati wana ba produit ça na kati on est vraiment nuisible pour la santé à moto ano wandu wa pense tonako ko mwisho a émission et tout on a toi mo sama mba bangi Le wapa bangi kwetu, mutu enza enda kuma magazin na uza. Alo, ifo tu tira atansyon, tu fungue akil, tu fungue mecho. Paski iko matata sana juu ya mwili ya batoto yetu ya bajen. Kamu tuko na kumyo ayo, kwa ma 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 substansi mweko kati ya ile ma produi ile, banafenge sufa ma bombo, itatire batoto, bajen, biko na konsome ayo, mendani kuko bito mbaya. Na mwisho italeta malari ya kicho, mtoto anakua, shijikomporte na mzuri ndani ya jama, anakua ye moe, anahezo leta matruble kusosiete. Voilà, pour terminer, un message vraiment très important que nous sommes en train d'éduquer la communauté, la population, d'être éveillé, de sensibiliser aussi nos députés qui votent des lois, comment est-ce qu'ils peuvent aussi harmoniser, comment que ça soit vraiment bien écrit et puis pour ne pas euh, amener euh, toute la jeunesse à pouvoir se procurer librement comme la loi l'autorise. D'où nous sommes obligés en tant que leader de la communauté, en tant que euh, membre de 36 Community Voices à, 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 à Burlington, nous sommes obligés de pouvoir vulgariser les messages, mais aussi en tant que spécialiste en santé publique, c'est ça notre rôle pour aider, la, informer la communauté, éduquer la communauté. Alors, euh, je ne sais pas, docteur Catherine, vous avez un petit mot en français Vous pouvez parler un petit français Je ne sais pas, c'est ça, c'est tout de suite très dur. C'est très dur. So, the, your last message in, in, in English, so... Yeah, I think that the public needs to be aware that, that there are uh, harms to THC uh, and our uh, legislators and our cannabis control board and our uh, in, uh, public officials need to make sure that the law is, fo is followed and that the, everyone is aware of the warnings and especially that THC is no longer seen in candies. Yeah. So we don't have our children ending up in the ERs and the intensive care units unable to breathe. Okay, merci. <laughs> Nous sommes arrivés à la fin de notre émission d'aujourd'hui pour ce mois de juin. Alors, nous vous disons merci et nous saluons toute l'équipe technique qui nous a soutenus, Jordan et toute l'équipe pour la réalisation. Merci aussi et bon anniversaire aussi à Channel 17 pour 39 ans d'existence. On a célébré la semaine passée alors, tout le monde est debout. Euh, merci. À la prochaine. Nous allons toujours vous servir euh, en Lingala, tout le lobby et euh, Maton Domingi, et en Swahili, Accenti. Et à la prochaine. Allez, ciao. See you next time. <laughs> next month. Thank you.